Hello, and welcome to We Cross October Ceremony 2022. I guess that's what it's called, something like that. Uh, this is the first round matchup. Uh, I am up against a dream team of X, Lion, and Bang, which is very weird uh, right out of the gate. It's something that I was not expecting, and as we will see very quickly, this actually turned out to be an Angel Tribal deck. Um, I know there's been some discussion. There's Angel is one of the more supported tribes in We Cross right now. Uh, and uh, I wasn't expecting to see, because tribal decks in general, they're still kind of developing. Angels, I think, is probably the strongest. I've been working on a Cosmos build that's not quite there yet. Um, so I was actually surprised to see one, especially in round one. Um, admittedly, I was feeling pretty good about this, just because knowing Angels in general tend to be weaker and have trouble opening lanes and stuff. So I was actually feeling pretty good about this. Um, hopefully, you know, start off the tournament with a win and just move on from there. Um, he did grow into his bang to enter charge too, otherwise not a whole lot to be said. Uh, he's explaining what these angels do, because a lot of them are uh, cards that I've never really seen before. So I think the one in the middle, which is what I'm getting clarification on, um, when it attacks it can vanish 3k or less if he's got angels in his enter zone, or something like that. I don't remember what it's called, I don't remember the exact effect, but um, I know it requires angels and it can vanish other signi as a result of it. So. I am looking at what my options are here. Um, I don't remember. I didn't record. Usually I record my opening hands in the ceremony, but I didn't this time. So I think what I'm probably doing is going into X Echo, uh, which is discard a red card. So I'll d pitch the Amethyst. I'll draw three. Uh, I think in this one I'm actually looking to fill the lanes because um, I don't think I had enough level ones to do that right now. The nice part about running Echo along with Machina um, wing slash, I believe is that one. I can't, I'm, yes. Uh, you could not only vanish a signy, but if you pitch like an amethystal or a red level one with X Echo, you can just get it back right away, which is exactly what I did. So, uh, going to Baphomet here to mill the three, and then play the amethystal back. So so far, pretty good on play on plan as far as what the deck wants to do, especially in the early game. Um. So the Amethystal Trigger, I do love Amethystal in DXM in general. I know a lot of people don't play it, but in, in Deus especially, because she's so graveyard-focused that, you know, you're putting things in the graveyards, um, more options to recur to pull back later, and then um, additionally filtering out your hand to try to dig for guards and that kind of thing. So he flips into an Arquin in the first life burst, so we're already one damage short of where I would expect to be. And also, um, additionally, it actually put my hand at seven cards, um, bouncing the, the Baphomet back to hand actually um, caused me to discard, which is something I wasn't anticipating. I was like, oh cool, I'll be at exactly six, but uh, unfortunately I lose a little bit of card advantage there, which this deck in general doesn't have really issues with that, just because Deus can recur things so easily. So it's not something that I was too worried about, um, you know, getting over that limit. So so he's on level 2. Um, again, there's uh, there's obviously some some top-level angels like Arquins and Exeas and, and stuff like that that are, I think Exeas is an angel, um, that are very strong, but the mid to lower range, other than like Haniel, um, just cards that I don't really see or know anything about. So this is going to be a little bit of discovery and figuring out what these things do as we go. Um, I'm hopeful that just the value and, and power of Deus will help me just kind of get through everything. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So he's filled up his lanes. Uh, he's got two open lanes. One of them, again, was the Arkwin Life First to get past that. And uh, he's just going in. So I believe that one... Yeah, he vanishes and then gets another. So there's no life burst on that one. He's got three open lanes now. I think that one... Yeah, he pays two. when He's got angels on the field, so he can pay two enter and then enter charge three as a result. So we do hit uh, an Impedum life burst, which will vanish uh, his other Signy, which is nice. Prevent the damage and open a lane, so that's really good. I do not have any servants, as you... Are seeing right now, so I take the extra little bit of damage there, which is unfortunate, but sometimes you gotta live with it. So I, that's I was hopeful that the X Echo would would dig me into one. Usually I try to do that, 
um, if I don't have a servant either in my opener or, you know, shortly after when I draw for that first draw phase, um, I usually try to echo to dig for one. Um, the goal, obviously, I think in general is to try to have one servant at all times. I think that's just a good kind of rule of thumb to live by. So, uh, his angels are somewhat small. I believe they're both like twos and threes and that sort of thing. So I bring out the, uh, the Lancelot horde here. Um, we, we weren't sure he forgot that he didn't pay when he grew to level two. So obviously we kind of rectified that really quickly and easily. So no big deal. So we've got two Lancelots. We've got a Baphomet who obviously is online. Um, Baphomet, of course, if there are five or more cards in the trash, goes up from a 3k to a 7k, which for a level one is very good. Um, the quote-unquote downside is that she mills you, but usually that's not an important thing. Usually it's actually a good thing. So she's doing two good things kind of at once, where she's milling you to fill up your graveyard, to pull them back, you know, with all the recursion, and then she's just a big body, um, which relevantly dodges like Lancelots and a lot of other common removal. So we had a life burst that vanishes the other Lancelot, unfortunately. Um, he does not have a guard as well. We hit Exia, uh, I believe that's Exia, in the life burst. So, uh, thankfully I didn't have anything upped to be relevant, so we did get him pretty close. He's down to two, which is really good, so I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I know I got Trigger of Victory on deck, which will crush one. Uh, there's a whole bunch of options for removal, both in the Elric deck and in the main deck, so I'm feeling confident about opening the lanes. Again, the problem is that I know he's got a lion, so I'm expecting, you know, a disrespect to come in and, and block a lot of my stuff. He's got all of the enter in the world. Um, he hasn't spent it on basically anything right now. Uh, he grew his one level so far. I mean, he's obviously going to grow again, but um, a huge amount of enter for being this early in the game, which is one thing that I wasn't really expecting um, I mean, that's, that's what, like 10 enter, something like that already. So he'll grow to level two, or is that level three? I believe that's, that may be level three, because I think he went first. Yeah, he went first, so he's probably level three. Yeah, that makes sense, because he got to pay for it twice. Yep. I don't remember what. Those I do know Kagetsuchi, um, that can recur cards. He doesn't have a hand right now, so his hand is completely empty. So obviously, the enter effect doesn't matter. Uh, he goes into MC Lion Dig, I believe is that one. Or no, it's not Dig. It's Stand Up. So when his Signy vanishes through battle, he can stand it up and attack again. So it's kind of like a, kind of like Lancer, I guess. Uh, and then he attaches, that's X1, which is when it attacks, you have the option to enter charge one or draw a card. So again, trying to refill some resources, because again, his hand is completely empty, which is another reason why I feel like I'm in a pretty good position, because I do have somewhat of a hand. You know, obviously he's not going to kill me this turn. Now again, I know that he's probably got disrespect, so he's probably going to survive at least one more turn. Um... But I feel like overall I'm in a decent position as it stands. So I'm deciding whether or not to actually grow into anything defensively right now. I have four life cloths, so I'm in a pretty good position. It's not the end of the world to take damage early just to refill your inner supply and potentially hit a life burst too, which is another reason why you kind of see if you can bait one out and maybe open up a lane or save another damage. Although he only is threatening one Signy damage right now, I believe. I don't remember what his middle one does. If that one actually may be able to vanish on attack, I don't remember off the top of my head. So a lot of decisions on whether or not to grow into my level twos. It is worth thinking about um, increasing the limit as well. I don't remember what's in my hand if I need the extra limit to do that. So I go into Machina Smash to vanish is Signy in the open lane. Um, with the reasoning being that he's gonna he's got the stand up already and getting the extra enter out of it is not a big deal for me. I'm kind of like okay with that to do it that way. Um, cuz again this the deck overall struggles more with enter than it does with card draw cuz 
there's so many cards that I can pull back from all kinds of different places. So, so he gets a Dark Energy on the Life Burst. I still don't have a guard, but I flipped one. And uh, there's, there has been no sighting of servants despite the milling and everything I've been doing. So even though I hit a servant in the life burst, I actually don't have one to bring back to hand right now. So that's kind of a common common trend in this particular matchup is that the servants are just not in anywhere that are useful to me. Um, and Deus in general, uh, sp specifically with Baphomet, right? The uh, Having milling servants is relatively common, so it's not... You know, you see that sometimes, and of course it's sad, you'd rather have to draw it as opposed to seeing it in the trash, but, um, you know, if you flip a Servant in the Life Burst, you can at least get it back potentially, but not if you don't mill it in the first place. So, I'll go into Days 3, I do pay with the Servant, so I now do have a Servant in my trash. Not that I have much Life Cloth left, but if I flip into another one, I'll at least have one that I can pull back to hand. Uh, he's got one open lane, he's got a Kagatsuchi, which is... I think it's 10 on my turn. I think the plus power is only on his turn. And I don't, again, I don't recognize what the other signy is. It looks like it's just a level 1, so it's not a big deal. So I do go into trigger victory here. Uh, I don't remember what my hand looks like if I needed it. I Usually I just kind of do it when they're kind of low on life to, to force the issue and put some pressure on. Additionally, my board is completely empty, so if he does hit a life burst, I'm in a position where... It doesn't affect anything for the most part. I mean, maybe he can draw a card off of certain effects, but it's not like he's going to bounce a Signy or, you know, vanish one or anything like that. So I'm looking through the trash. I go for, I believe that is a Kentucky. Uh, I don't remember, and I didn't get a very good look at what card that was. So at this point, I'm kind of deciding what the best way of filling these lanes are and removing... Uh, this deck is very good at having a lot of removal options, again, both in the main deck and in the Elric deck. Like, I can always fall back onto using souls and attaching them that way. Um, so I play Dark Energy. I use the Enter effect to give minus five to, I think it was the Kentucky. Yeah, because I have two Lancelots, and then I just vanish both of them. Because now the Kentucky has dropped below 5,000. Because um, the Kentucky is 10k on my turn. So with the minus 5 and then the two Lancelots can open the lanes. So that was another consideration, I think, when I was growing into Machina Smash. Uh, just knowing that I might have to do, you know, a 3 and two twos to do it this way. So he grows into Bang Big Bang, which is a card I've never seen played before. Um, so we're going to have to... There's some figuring out that he's... It's cost 7, so, but again, he has all of the Enter on the planet right now. And uh, another side effect of this is uh, we'll take our, both of our trashes and our fields, which he doesn't have anything on the field, and they shuffle into the deck. And then we look at the top seven cards of the deck, and we can basically refill our boards back up however we want. Um, with also the caveat that the enter effects for all of the Signy that are entering do not trigger. So it's, it's essentially a full reset. Um... If the uh, cards I pull do have attack abilities, like um, a Kentucky, or I don't have any Vanish removal, I believe, on um, attack that's in here that's very useful, um, you can do it that way. Uh, but I don't believe that that is really relevant for the cards that I'm using in this particular build. So really it's just a way for him to basically, when he's up against three open lanes, which is what he was, he can... Uh, basically do a full reset. So again, it's a very powerful ability. You can do it on opponent's turn to essentially stop three damage, but it does cost seven, and it's not like like some of the other effects that can stop three lanes, like a Madoka or an MC Lion. They usually only cost, like, those two specifically at max cost five. Uh, you'd have to discard two cards, of course, for those. But um, so there are other ways to do that, but they're also modular, so you don't have to do all of them at once if you don't need them. Um, it's the kind of thing that in this particular, just because this build is so aggressive and very effective at opening lanes, the fact that he's got something like this that's such a huge, essentially a board wipe to basically reset everything, um, it makes a big difference. So it also has the side effect, too, potentially of generating both enter and card advantage or you know some combination thereof because again he only has one card in hand 
Uh, but he can basically use that, even though it costs center seven enter up front. Like if I attack into those lanes, um, he's generating three enter off of it. So it's just a very big upfront cost. Um, so I I kept the cards there just because I wasn't sure. Again, it's the first time I've ever faced the card, so I wanted to make sure that I did it right. So I kept him face down because I didn't want him to see you know what I was discarding and all that stuff. Um, so at the end of the day. It ended up working okay. Um, so I've got two Sabnox. I do have an Ereshkigal, which I was kind of happy to see there. Because um, Ereshkigal is a 13. It's big. Um, obviously, with this big brain, you couldn't do any rise effects or anything. But Ereshkigal is a natural 13. But again, because the enter effects don't trigger. Um, which, honestly, I wish they would have. If they had triggered, then I would have been in very good position. Because I could have just trashed my two enter wiped his board back and then just swung in for lethal basically at this point or at least threatened it you know with um he would have to disrespect it uh but he couldn't he only has one card in hand so i would have gotten at least one in but again that stuff is all irrelevant um because the enter effects don't trigger anyway so knowing that he only has one card in hand and he has all of the enter on the planet i just swing in here um you know excited to kill the exia as well obviously and uh the goal basically is to just, on this particular case, was to get the biggest Signy I could. And uh, thankfully I hit two Sabnox, which are just big 10Ks, and then obviously the Ereshkigal, which is a huge wall. So even despite all that, um, I'm feeling pretty good. His Life Burst is a uh, Kagatsuchi, which will allow him to bring back a Kagatsuchi from his trash to the field. So a little bit of help card advantage from there but he's out of life cloth so even though i haven't seen a servant all game and again now that the servant that i was was in the trash at one point is now gone um and uh, i still haven't seen one so all of the servants that were in the deck are still back in the deck somewhere for me to be struggling and figuring out where they are So even at this point, knowing, you know, that he's, he kind of slowed me down a little bit. Obviously, taking that turn off with no damage is huge. Uh, the bang, big bang was really good. Um, also knowing that he's got line disrespect to probably stop at least two damage. Um, I'm still feeling pretty good at this point. Because I'm and he has no life cloth, so all I need to do is either open a couple lanes, you know, the disrespect will stop probably two, but probably not all three. If I can open all three and just do it that way, that would be great. Uh, the the only hard part is that I'm a little low on enter at this point. And again, I haven't been drawing servants, which is unfortunate. So my life cloth is a little bit lower than I think it needs to be. So he uses, uh, he attaches a soul with X zero, uh, specifically just to get the X, you know, whenever you attach a soul power, which is, you can discard a card to draw a card, which is basically what he did. I have no idea what that card is. Looks like he's... Oh, he's using the once per game. He's using X's once per game. So he's excluding his Silent Assassin. Which in my head I'm like, okay, that's not bad. Um, so basically those two Signy are going to gain Assassin. Um, which is unfortunate because, again, I don't have a Servant in hand. So I can't let them both... If they both hit me and I don't get a guard, then I just lose. So it's another reason why I'm kind of like, man, I really need servants right now. So I have to vanish one of them. Uh, thankfully, there was a level two on board. If there was a level, th if they were both threes, then uh, there's nothing I could have done about it. I do incidentally burn him for two enter, not that it means anything. Um, so flip into Baphomet, which is useless. I do flip into, I believe that's Enervating Melody, which doesn't matter because his Signy is not upped. So...
Uh, and again, he does have two cards in hand. So, and he's got all the inner in the world. Um, Lion Disrespect is mostly online. Because um, he can stop all three of my attacks at this point. Um, and he also gains... So basically, yeah, he's got the, the resources to full disrespect me to stop all my signing attack, but if he does that, he'll lose all the cards in his hand. So essentially, I just have to continue to put pressure on, uh, you know, vanish, or at least put be in a position to vanish everything, which is I, I put the, uh, the uh, Deus 2 soul underneath, so it gives static of minus 2, and then, actually that might be Deus 1. Um, so he goes into Xeno Cluster, which is probably the only time that the single draw has been super relevant. Because now what he can do is he can grow into Disrespect, he can pay the full five to stop two Signy attacks, and he now has two cards to discard, which one of which is a Servant, which of course if you see one Servant being discarded, and he's got one card left, uh, pretty safe to say what that card is. So none of my Signy are allowed to attack, and uh, he does discard the Servant. And now I'm in potential real danger here. Um, so the fact that he did have a Servant in his hand kind of at the right possible moment, which would have been nice for me to have, obviously. I mean, I've been saying that enough, but uh, sometimes it just happens, you know. This is the game we play, and uh, sometimes the life bursts kill you, sometimes the Servants kill you, sometimes... You know, there's a bunch of different ways to go about it. So he fills the board up. He uses uh, the X2 soul, which when that attacks will vanish a Signy 12k or less, which of course is exactly what my Sabnock is. Um, so there's no really conceivable way I could have filled the board in such a way that it would have protected me against... I would have needed like three 13s, which this deck doesn't run. I do have two Ereshka Galls, but I don't think the other one's in my hand. Um, the only card that's in my Elrig deck right now is Death deck, which is useless. It doesn't do anything for me at the moment, so there's no way to protect. He's kind of just, you know, going through the motions, which is, is fine. It's good to do that. Um, so yeah, so Kagetsuchi does get a power boost, which is why the Reshkigal gets vanished, but it doesn't matter, because he can open the lane and then swing in for damage, and then that's the game. So... A little bit of an auspicious start. Uh, I finally did get a Servant in hand on that last turn. Again, not that it mattered at that point. The damage had kind of already been done. But again, sometimes that just happens. And uh, kudos to him for playing Angel Tribal and doing, I think, reasonably well. I don't remember how he ended up. But uh, obviously he was good enough to beat a pretty standardized Deus Center DXM deck. And uh, he played it well. He did, He kind of got the jump on me with the, the Big Bang to... I mean, he basically turned off two full turns of attacks, which is exactly what he needed to do to uh, to get past me and used utilized uh, X Center to break open the holes he needed. So kudos to him. And uh, we will move on to round two. We're 0 and 1, unfortunately, uh, but we'll see if we can kind of right the ship and uh, go on from there. So as always, thanks for watching.